Good morning and uh, welcome to our third annual patient-driven uh, precision medicine uh, symposium. Thank you for uh, coming. We have, I think you can see, a very exciting uh, agenda for you today, but I'd like to uh, give you my uh, personal perspective on what makes this uh, so exciting. In 2014, uh, Malaysia Airlines uh, flight MH370 went down in the Indian Ocean and there was 24 by 7 coverage of that event for two weeks, as it should be. Hundreds of, hundreds of patients, sorry, hundreds of passengers had disappeared without a trace. And that's of serious concern. So 10 years ago, with some colleagues here, we wrote a, a paper where we looked at just two of our leading hospitals. And what we looked for was rates of heart attacks. And we saw a huge rise in heart attacks from about 1997, I think, to about 2005. And it was not a Airbus full of passengers. It was about 700 Airbuses full of passengers. And, it was n and the interesting thing is there was no coverage of it. And we didn't know about it. But if we'd only looked at our own data in our own hospitals, we would have actually known this. And worse yet, unlike Air Malaysia, we actually shot those 700 Airbuses down. Because what was this uh, 700 Airbuses just in our hospital? By the way, our hospitals were not uniquely unique this way, just we were the only ones who studied it. It was Vioxx. And it, it was Vioxx. And so we were not only unaware of 700 plane loads worth of patients who had been affected, we had actually caused it, and we were completely unaware of it. And when I, when I saw this, we, then we did other studies using information technology to study other drugs that uh, were coming out, such as uh, Avandia, and we, and we saw the effect, and we, we contributed to information that had been black boxed. Uh, and we contributed to information caused um, FDA to black box it. And, I th and then, nothing happened. We did not change the practice of medicine. Uh, the FDA invested in a big uh, network, Mini Sentinel, nothing really happened. And I became uncharacter un uncharacteristically pessimistic about the ability to change medicine. And then, during the course of the last three years, because of the people I have met in the course of this conference, such as Matt Might, Karen Aish, Kathy Juisti, Megan Boyle, Susan Love, and many others, I learned something. You didn't have to be a doctor. You didn't have to have a whole August medical school behind you. You didn't have to have a whole healthcare system behind you you could actually change things for your family and for the rest of the patients like you without having these huge resources. What it required was passion, focus, optimism, and the ability to navigate information and data. Because indeed, medicine is an information and knowledge processing discipline, and that's been at the core of uh, what drives our department. So, because I know that you're here not to hear me, I'm gonna quickly wrap up and just say that what you're gonna to hear today will take us a next step further to show how some of our assumptions about who the drivers of the new business models of biomedicine and healthcare delivery, how that is gonna be changed by these patient-driven stories. I'm quite confident now that the rest of us uh, and industry will follow along, but it's pretty clear that these disruptive and prismatic models are coming from these patient stories. Lest I forget, I'd like to uh, just thank, before I forget, the individuals who made this possible. First of all, I'd like to thank um, 
Amazon Web Services for ensuring that not only do we feed your minds, but your bellies during the course of this day. So I want to thank Amazon. <laughs> I want to fa thank our Executive Director, uh, Suzanne Churchill. Um, I want to thank uh, Samantha Lemos, who really has taken the brunt of this organization, and the many staff of the Department of Biomedical Informatics, and I did not know it was going to happen, but I'm delighted to see a number of our graduate students and postdocs who are helping out, and thank you to them. So I just would like to quickly introduce uh, Dean Daly, who has been dean now for how long? Six months? I must be having fun because it seems a lot shorter than that. <laughs> so we're very uh, fortunate to have uh, Dean George Daly as our dean not only for the obvious reasons of his scientific uh, leadership and competence and the fact that he's willingly taken on many of the difficult challenges of the medical school, but because he himself, very much aligned with this conference, has led not only uh, disruptive models and breakaway business models in the use of, for example, stem cell therapeutics, but importantly, has taken on the societal role. Some of the younger people in this audience will not remember how difficult it was to engage in stem cell research um, early on when uh, uh, Dean Daly and others were trying to do it. And to be, a, to be vocal and determined and patient-driven at that time was not particularly easy, and there was a lot of uh, pushback. And without further ado, I'm looking forward to hear uh, Dean Daly's uh, remarks. Thank you.